Now we are going to see about persistent storage for Kubernetes. This is where persistent volume and persistent volume claim terminology are used. Let's get started. When you see data persistence in Kubernetes, whenever an application runs and stores the data in a pod, it is not permanent. As soon as the pod get deleted, the data gets deleted. So how can we retain the data? Let's take an example, MySQL data. You are saving data to the database and you want those data to persist. But when the pod get destroyed, the data gets destroyed. So how can we solve this issue? That's when this persistent volume comes. Let's see in this picture how the persistent volume and persistent volume claim works. How can the pod attain a storage that can be permanent? Firstly, we need to create a storage in AWS. It could be EFS or EBS. EFS, Elastic File System, generally used for multi-read, multi-write. Elastic Block Store, generally used for read-write once, which means one pod can write only one time. But if it's EFS, multi-write or multi-read, that time a multiple pods can write at the same time. So we create either EFS or EBS in AWS. Then what is PV? What is persistent volume? Persistent volume is something that to let Kubernetes know there is a volume exist there in the cloud. Using persistent volume, we inform Kubernetes, here is the volume. Using persistent volume claim, the pod requests the persistent volume. The way the pod gets the volume is by submitting a request, which is called persistent volume claim. This is a quick overview. Now we are going to dive into the deep examples. First step, how we can create an elastic file store elastic file system in elastic file system just go to the dashboard and fill all those details at the end you will get a file system id that's the first step second step is that in kubernetes you create a persistent volume in the persistent volume you mention the file system id which we got on the previous step this is how you let kubernetes know that there is a volume exists there the third step is that you create a persistent volume claim using persistent volume claim the pod requests or it binds to the persistent volume it claims the volume that it want to use if you see a pod, you can clearly see that EFS claim. We mentioned the name of the persistent volume claim there. This is how everything is linked. The pod links to a persistent volume claim, which is EFS claim. In the EFS claim is the name of the persistent volume claim. And this request is made to the persistent volume. And the persistent volume will link back to the file system. ID. This is how the link works. This is the static provisioning, but we want dynamic. What are the advantages of having a dynamic? It helps us to auto scale. It helps us to reuse the storage. So the way we can use the dynamic storage is that you need to define the storage class. In this example, we use storage class and same like the first step where we create the file system, you will get the file system number as well. You assign that to the storage class and you give a name to the storage class. In this way, whenever you want to claim for the persistent volume, you can mention the storage class there. In that way, it's more dynamic and you can request persistent volume claim multiple times to that file system. If it is the static way, you can claim only once to the file system but in this way you can claim multiple times multiple storage to the file system and the persistent volume claim can be multiple times assigned to the storage clause the pod then links back to the persistent volume claim this is how everything is linked you can see efs claim one and here also you can see efs claim one that's how everything is linked together so this is a quick overview of the different types of storage the static provisioning and also dynamic provisioning and the way the persistent volume claim and the persistent volume works in Kubernetes. Thanks for watching.